In this video, I'm gonna explain how to set up a quick, simple photo booth that will add a ton of fun to your Christmas parties. We only need a few things for a photo booth like this, and most of these you'll probably already have. First of all, we need a tripod and a space to shoot. Ideally, pick a wall with a plain background, and if necessary, take down any frames. It'll make it easier for guests if they can see themselves while shooting, so it helps if, like the 750D here, your Canon has a flip screen. If not, you could perhaps hook it up to a tablet or TV and display the live view feed that way. Unless you don't mind your guests getting their mince pie covered hands all over your camera, you'll also need a release. The wireless Canon RC6 remote here is ideal, but any cable release will do. Next, let's think about lighting. You could use the ambient light if there's enough of it, but a flash will give much cleaner results. By pointing a speed light upwards and backwards, we can bounce it off the ceiling and wall behind so that it spreads out and floods the space, resulting in much more flattering, more soft light. I don't want to spend the party changing batteries, so I want to keep the flash's output fairly low. To do this, I'm going to use a higher ISO than I'd normally use for flash, but I'm happy to compromise on image quality as it's not like we're going to be making huge prints here. So I have my flash in ETTL mode and my 750D here set to manual exposure mode with the shutter speed at 1 200th of a second and the aperture at f8 with the ISO, like I say, at 800. My flash power, because it's in ETTL, will adapt to my exposure settings. Next we need to think about focusing and the 750D here has a hugely useful feature that makes this all too easy. We simply set the AF to AI servo so that the focus is continuous and then we enable face tracking. This way the focus will detect faces and snap onto them wherever they appear in the frame. It's really helpful on a setup like this but if your Canon doesn't have face detection there's a simple solution focus on a mark on the floor and then switch to manual focus to lock it. A good set of props and costumes can bring a shoot like this to life, as well as add a little extra colour to your photos. So set out some costumes and props to one side. A simple photo booth set like this with pieces of card attached to sticks is a fun inexpensive option, but if like us you've got a big costume box then even better. Now with everything set up we can sit back and let our guests do their thing, whatever that thing might be. So why not take it a step further and set up an automatic slideshow. We need a laptop for this with Lightroom and we also need a means of transferring the images to the laptop as they're taken, either with a cable or using Wi-Fi if your Canon has it. Open Lightroom and go to the auto import feature here and then direct it to the exact same folder. Then as photos get taken they'll automatically be imported into Lightroom. All we do next is head into the slideshow module and hit play. And the cool thing about this is that the slideshow runs on a loop and as more photos get taken in the booth they're added to that loop so everyone gets to see their photos moments after they've been shot. And of course once the party is over you can go through the set of images and put together a nice festive collage of your favourite shots like this. I'll show you how this is done with a few simple Photoshop skills. So here we are in Adobe Bridge and you can see here are my set of photo booth portraits and I'm going to show you how we can take all of those pictures and put them into a fun collage like this. So let's get cracking. First of all we'll go into Photoshop and I'll just make a new document by going to File New and I'm just going to set it to Width 1150 Height 3500 Pixels background contents white and hit OK to give me a thin strip like image like this. Then I'm going to go back into bridge and I'm going to select four images to use for this film strip. So 
we could perhaps go for this one and I can hold command or control to select more than one file so I'll just choose one two three four and then I'm going to bring my window off to the side over here just so I've got both the bridge interface and the Photoshop interface here on screen and I'm going to drag those files from bridge into Photoshop and then each will appear as a smart object and I have the bounding box around each that I can use to resize the images so that they fit into a film strip and it's important to hold shift while resizing just to constrain the proportions as we drag from the corner point of the box there and then I can position that one there double click to apply and position the others in the same way and with that done I'm just going to go to layer and flatten image just to give me a single layer now I'm going to open up one of my background images here if I just get back into Adobe Bridge notice I've got a folder here called backgrounds and within that are lots of different backgrounds to choose from and these are all supplied amongst the project files so I'm going to go for this nice Christmassy one here so I'll open that one up and then I'm going to use the move tool go back to my other image there and I can click and drag the image up to the tab of the background image and then down in and release to copy that image over so now I've got my film strip and my background here on separate layers and notice I've got show transform controls checked up here in the move tool options that gives me the bounding box around the layer that I can use to resize it if necessary but I think that's working quite well for my image here and we can of course add more film strips in exactly the same way so I'll jump forwards to a point where I've done just that so here you can see I've used the same method to add a couple more film strips. Now let's see if we can make everything look like it belongs together. First of all I'm going to add a drop shadow to each of these layers here. I can double click the layer in the layers panel here and choose to add a drop shadow down here. So I'll highlight that and then if we just zoom in to the film strip over here you can see we now have a little shadow and I can click and drag within the image here to move that shadow around and if we take a look at the elements that make up the background here you can see the shadows are falling across to the left so I'll try and match that with my photo booth pictures here so I'm going to drag this drop shadow off to the left slightly we don't need to push it too far somewhere around about there I think is going to work and I'll hit OK to apply that now I can hold alt and drag that layer style there that appears in the layers panel to the other layers to copy the effect over and that will quickly allow me to apply a drop shadow to my other layers in the same way so now I've got shadows beneath each film strip that just helps to ground them within the scene now I think my film strips are looking a little bit too straight and uniform so I'm going to try and add a little bit of a curve to them so I'm going to highlight this strip here and I'm going to use a filter for this so we go to filter distort and shear now notice in the shear options here I've got a little control and I can drag this to the left or the right and you'll see how this affects the shape of my layer so I can create kind of a wave like effect like this and in fact let's keep it fairly subtle so I'm going to bring these points in quite narrow like this and perhaps move the bottom point slightly I'm happy with that so I'm going to hit OK to apply and see how that affects my strip of images there and we could also perhaps click the bounding box rotate it slightly to get more of a dynamic angle like this now I quite like that but I think now the shadow is looking a bit flat and unrealistic so I'm going to right click the drop shadow effect on that layer there and I'm going to choose create layer and I get a little warning here I'll hit OK and notice what happens in my layers panel here the drop shadow now appears on its own layer below the image layer so I can edit each independently so I'm going to highlight the drop shadow layer there and then click on the bounding box and then I can rotate the shadow and notice I can kind of separate it from the film strip so that it looks kind of more 3D so they're kind of getting further apart as they reach the bottom of the frame down here if we just zoom in and take a closer look you'll see how this is working so there's my shadow and it just makes it look as if the piece of paper here is kind of floating away 
from the background and I'm happy with that. And we can of course add a similar effect to the other layers. So again let's go to the shear option here, just change the settings slightly, perhaps hit OK and we'll do the same for this one here. So now I've distorted the other strips in the same way and I've also separated out those drop shadows and I'm going to add a couple of pins now to make it look as if these are pinned on this cork board here. So if we go back into bridge, notice in my backgrounds folder here I've got this image here and this is more simple and there are just a few pins here that we can use. So I'm going to zoom in closer to those and grab the quick selection tool from the tools panel and just paint over one of them like this and you'll see how the tool does a pretty good job of just snapping on to the edges. I can hit command or control and C to copy that, go back to my main image and hit command or control and V to paste it in. Then I can grab the move tool and zoom in a little bit. I can click on the bounding box and change the position like this to make it look as if we've pinned the strip in at the corner up here. Now to make that a little bit more realistic I can add a shadow so I'm going to highlight the layer below and then click the create new layer icon here in the layers panel to give me a layer below the pin layer. In fact let's call it pin and we we'll call this pin shadow and I'm just going to grab the brush tool set my foreground color to black and I'll use a low opacity for my brush somewhere around about here and then I can just paint to add in a subtle shadow underneath the pin like this. And if I toggle that off and on, you can see the difference that makes. It just helps to ground the pin, just as we did with the drop shadows on our strips. And we can, of course, add other pins in the same way. Now, I think my composite here is nearly complete, but there's one glaring error. The part of this strip here would obviously be behind this foreground detail here. So what I'd like to do is add a mask so that it looks like the paper here is underneath these leaves. So I'm going to highlight that background layer at the bottom there, hit Command or Control and J to copy it and I'm going to drag this layer right to the very top of my layer stack. Now I need to make a precise selection to isolate this part of the image over here. But rather than try and select all of these different tones, it's easier to actually select the rest of the image and then invert it. So I'm going to grab the quick selection tool from the tools panel over here and I'm going to start painting over the cork background here like this. And you'll see fairly quickly how the tool snaps onto the edges. In fact, in some cases it might go wrong like up here. And if that happens, we hold Alt and Paint to subtract areas from the initial selection like this. And with that done, we can improve the selection edge either using Select and Mask or if you've got an older version of Photoshop or if you're using Photoshop Elements, you'll find refine edge instead but I'll use select and mask here in Photoshop CC and then I can go over to the settings over here I can check smart radius to increase the area of refinement I can use the refine radius brush and paint along these edges here and you'll see how this gives me a slightly more accurate selection around these edge details here and this is quite a tricky selection to make so we might need to tidy up by painting on a layer mask in a second but for now We'll leave it like that. We can go down to the options, the output options down here and choose to output to a layer mask and then hit OK. So now you can see a mask is attached to that top layer there based on the selection we just made and it's actually doing the opposite to what we want. It's hiding the area that we need and revealing everything else. So we need to invert the layer mask with command or control and I and that gives us the effect that we're after. Now you can see it looks as if our image strips here are below this foreground detail and if we need to tidy up we can just highlight that mask thumbnail there, grab the brush tool, I'll set my foreground colour to black and increase my brush opacity there and then I can just paint to tidy up any rough patches around the image like this. And I'm happy with that. And that's my finished Photo Booth Composite.